Hello, George Hepworth, Grover Park Consulting. Power apps for access developers. After a fairly long break, while I was working on a couple of different projects and really didn't have time to do a lot of YouTube videos, I'm going to start documenting one of those projects, which was an online searchable database for a nonprofit organization called the Lander Trail Foundation. Let me show you an overview of the application itself and some of the highlights that we'll dig into in later videos when we look at the details behind what you see here. First, let me introduce you quickly to the Lander Trail Foundation. The Lander Trail Foundation was set up in Afton, Wyoming, which is close to the small town where I grew up. The Lander Trail Foundation was set up to gather and conserve and protect materials related to that particular uh, branch of the Oregon Trail. Part of that process of setting up and organizing the museum was that Two people donated their personal libraries of books and other materials related to the Lander Trail to the Foundation. Uh, those books and materials have languished here in the Lander Trail Center, uncatalogued, unorganized for, for quite a while, for longer than probably anybody really anticipated. One of the provisions under which the material was donated to the Lander Trail Foundation is foundation was that it would form the core of a research library for people looking for source material on the Lander Trail historically. Another provision was that the materials would not leave the premises. As you can see here in this picture, the Lander Trail Center occupies a two-story building which is actually converted from an old barn. The difficulty is there is no internet connection to that building, but even more critical to the success of this project, there is no way for me in Washington State to reach out to the Lander Trail Foundation Center there in Afton, Wyoming, and actually put the materials into the catalog. That was a big reason why I decided to use Power Apps as part of that process. Power Apps can work in a remote situation, as long as you have a cellular enabled device like a tablet or a phone, you can connect to the cloud database with an interface that will capture the data we needed. And, and those were the reasons, the two main reasons why I decided to go with Power Apps for this particular project. I'm going to document in these videos and I don't know how many there will be. There were probably a dozen or more to cover everything. I will step through each of the components and talk about how they are developed, the code behind some of them. I won't go into much detail about a lot of the code because you can find that material in other previously published videos. I'll focus mainly on the data design and data management issues that I had to confront in order to make this work. Quick overview first. As you can see, I now have entered 1,929 titles. These are books into a SQL Server database which resides in the cloud and which provides the data for this application. The application interface is running in Power Apps. Uh, I'm looking at the design or development interface in my 365 account, but it also works on a tablet, on a desktop runtime version of Power Apps under Windows, or on a cell phone, smartphone, like an iPhone or a Samsung Android phone. Across the top, we have a menu listing the five main components managing the publications, a lending aspect where we can check books in, check books out. Because of the on-premises restriction that I mentioned for most of the materials, 
This will probably never be more than a concept because in order to actually check the materials out, someone has to travel to the location and look at the books there. They can't be taken off premises. But in order to facilitate the possibility that will happen someday, I added that component. This component uses the power of the internet and more specifically a Google Books API to retrieve information about books either by scanning the ISBN on the back cover of the book or using a title search to find information about that book and bring it back for review, analysis, and potentially to be saved into the database. I added a facility to take cover photos so that part of the record will be not just the detail, the, the title, subtitle, author, publisher, that kind of thing, but also a picture of the cover of the book and, uh, and a, a function that allows me to connect photos with the book to which they belong. Those are the five main functions. In addition, we have admin functions. We can edit authors. Here's where you would go in and correct spellings of authors' names, add authors manually, delete unused authors, and so on. Same is true for publishers, categories. One of the things that makes a library like this usable as a searchable research tool is the ability to assign books to different categories. Lander Trail is a prominent category. Western Wyoming History is another prominent category. By creating and assigning categories to books, we can facilitate searching. Participants relates to the ability to check books in and out. And again, because of this restriction to on-premises use, this probably will be very low priority. This relates to the same process. A role is, is a donor to the library, a borrower from the library, and so on. These three will, again, be pretty low usage. These are features of a book that I added thinking that perhaps they might be useful. I don't know how useful the foundation will find them, but this is a ranking system on a, on a scale from trashed and unusable through mint condition for the media. Is the book in good shape or not? And whether it's a book, a DVD, a publication like a magazine or, or other media type. One of the key functions of making this usable is to locate the shelf and the bookcase within the library where a book is located. And so you need to be able to create and assign uh, names to bookcases and identify the shelves on bookcases so that when we manage our publications, we can indicate where in this library that book will be found. This is, in fact, a picture of one of these bookcases. And you can see there are volumes here. These are series. So that's the overview. I'm going to quit here. I'm going to try to keep these videos a little shorter than previous versions, so I'll cut this off now. In video two, I will take you behind the scenes, starting with the ability to manage publications. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned for future installments of the Lander Trail Foundation Searchable Library Database using Power Apps and SQL Server. See you next time.